Thank you, Senator, for your question. Um, <clears throat> it comes down to an aspect of collection. So going back to the co-op discussion, I, I know of a number of co-ops that have told me, well, we don't have cyber threats in our industrial networks. And I'll ask, well, have you ever collected or looked inside those networks? And the answer will be, well, no. Well, then how would you know that they're not there? Because I've, I've absolutely seen nation state level threats going into those environments. And oftentimes utilities and others will say, well, I'm not a good threat. But that's the one thing you don't get a vote on. I mean, I've seen adversaries training in those environments, if nothing else. Um, so I think it's important to address that our lack of understanding of that threat landscape translates to also how we are trying to defend against these attacks. A lot of our best practices and standards and regulations are built off of what would be applied to enterprise security networks at JP Morgan and may not be appropriate for an electric utility. So I think there's that balance we have to understand that collection gap. One of the things that I think is most important is that workforce development. And this is coming from a technology vendor, I will tell you, the most important aspect is the human. Um, we use technology to sort of be a band-aid until we get that. Um, on the human aspect, by having better trained professionals in industrial security, they will be able to make the right decisions for their infrastructure. We talk about information sharing, but the problem with information sharing is always the ability to action it, which is at the utility or infrastructure site. So these professionals that we're training are, are very critical, not only in K through 12, but also in the professional training that we have out in the industry. So the big issue.